Have you ever had any difficulty just a little bit unsure about what questions you're supposed to have for the person you're dating? If this is you, then baby, I got seven for you right now that's going to change the game. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. Now, look, I know the dating scene can be a little ghetto, as some of y'all call it. And some of y'all are saying there's a little bit of pee in the pool. And while that may or may not be true, depending on your perspective, if you are in the dating field, sometimes getting to know someone, you might be stuck a little bit. You might be saying, well, I don't know what questions I have. I don't know what I should be saying. I want to know them, but I don't want to run them away with, you know, some deep, deep, deep questions. And look, I absolutely get it. So I'm going to give you seven important questions that you should ask a man that you are dating if you want commitment. If you don't want commitment, <laughs> you want a one night stand, you want to sleep around, you don't care. This video ain't for you, boo. But if you want commitment, long term relationship or even marriage, keep watching. <laughs> And before we get into it, y'all know I'm nosy, so put in the comment section, what was a question that you asked a potential partner that you were dating or something that went well with you that you could help a few other people who are struggling in this area? So per usual, you know I have to give y'all some type of disclaimer. And the disclaimer for today is this is not an exhaustive list, meaning there's a whole bunch of other questions that I could have added on here, but baby, for the sake of time, we just gonna get into these seven. And also these are not questions that I want you to ask on the first date. These are just questions in general that you should be exploring with the person you're dating to get to know them on a deeper level. So look, let's get into the first one. The first one is, have you learned anything from your past relationships? Yeah, absolutely. I personally feel that if you've been in relationships in the past, you should have experienced something in that relationship that you needed to learn from, that you needed to grow from. And if you are self-aware and if you're honest, truth be told that this ain't even about the other person, it's about you. So if you're dating this person, right, and you ask them and you say, hey, what are some things you learned from your past relationships or your past relationship and they blame the other person? all the time is always the ex's fault uh-uh red flag for me because <laughs> i'm gonna spin the block and be like okay but what did you learn is there something that you could have done better is there something that you could have shifted and changed and said okay cool i messed up in this or on this in my last relationship and i'm going to make sure not to do the same or repeat the same patterns in the ones moving forward being introspective about your past relationships is key and if this man is wanting to build with you and he wants a commitment he is going to be open he is going to share he is going to go a little bit deeper and say hey yo i wasn't perfect i messed up i wasn't a good communicator i may have cheated i may have did this this and this but i'm a better person now i've grown i've learned i'm not doing that no more i was younger now i'm more mature if he has that perspective i'm here for it i'm here for it the second question to ask a man while you are dating if you want commitment is what are your long-term relationship goals now this question is very self-explanatory because the goal of this question is to figure out what phase and stage of the relationship journey they are in if they're like look i'm not looking for anything serious i just want to have sex casually i don't want a commitment i don't ever want to get married and you do want a longer term commitment or even marriage then we are already know this person isn't even somebody that we're trying to entertain. I don't care how fine he is. I don't care how much money he got. I don't care where he's taking you. He does not align with your goals and where you're trying to go. But if he does say, you know what? I'm looking to settle down. I'm wanting to get to know someone a little bit better to eventually get into a long-term relationship or a marriage. Then you know you and him are on the same page. It may not be perfect. There may be some bumps along the road, but at least you guys know that you guys have a similar goal and you can keep getting to know this person versus knowing that you guys are not on the same page at all and still trying to entertain him for some reason, knowing doggone well that it ain't gonna work out in the future anyway. 
The third question that you should ask a man while dating is how does he handle conflict or disagreement? Now, this is a great question because I have been in the game for over a decade and I have seen conflict and communication issues on a thousand, on a 10, okay? And it is a massive problem in a lot of people's relationship because not only do they, you know, they're not on the same page in regards to communication and things that are in their life, but they also don't know how to resolve conflict. When things get a little heated, when there's a disagreement, there's still some discord there and they don't know how to handle the other person. So I think it's important for you to, one, if you've never heard of this, listen, I'm about to school you. There is something called, just like we know of the five love languages, the same dude, Gary Chapman, has the five apology languages. So it basically talks about when there's a rupture in your relationship and things are a little bit rocky and get back on one accord, is basically saying, how does your partner want to be apologized to? Like, how can you fix the situation? Because not everybody goes about it the same way. Some people need time, some people need space, some people need for you to do something, some people need for you to verbalize it, like all of these different things. And so it's important for you to know your apology language, just like you're supposed to know your love language, but also know your partner's apology language as well. And I think it's important for them to understand how they work as an individual and be able to communicate that to you. If you know like, man, when I get into arguments, I need some space, I need to walk around the block, I need some silence, I need for you to leave me alone and be with my thoughts for a little bit and then we can come back at a later time to reconcile or if you're a type of person that's like nope we get into a disagreement we need to figure it out right now in this second and if we don't it's going to be an issue you need to know that about yourself right you need to know do you get heated do you argue do you yell do you use profanity like what are some of the things that you do and make sure you know that about yourself but also making sure that you're communicating that to your partner so this is a great question to ask because if you do not know how this is going to work out with them, you want to know if this is something that you can handle. If they get too turned up and start yelling and using profanity and hitting walls and doing all of this stuff, baby, <laughs> for the average person, that's a little bit too much for us. So you need to know what you're dealing with. And hopefully that person, the other person that you're dating is open and honest enough to say, yeah, this is my issue. I'm working on it. It's something I've always struggled with. I'm trying to get a handle on it. I'm in therapy. I'm talking to, you know, at least they have a plan to work on it. If they don't, because the follow-up question is, okay, cool. If you do that, then what are you doing to resolve that issue? What are you doing to work through that issue? And if they don't have a plan, mm -mm, I ain't dating you no more. True. That's it. That's it for me. Issa, no. Now, the fourth question that you may ask a person that you're dating, if you want a commitment, is how do you handle stress and life's challenges? Now, this is a little bit different from the one that I just talked about because the conflict and the disagreement in the last one is typically conflict and disagreement that you guys have with each other, right? For this one, it's specifically talking about stress, life circumstances, because those things we don't always have control over, right? So if there's a death in the family, if they, you know, you lost your job, if something that is completely outside of your control, an emergency happens, how does that person handle that, right? It literally has nothing to do with the person you're dating. It's life throwing you that curveball that I always talk about. And how do you handle life when it is literally beating you up? So you want to know this about the person that you're dating. Like, how do they handle stress? Are they like, you know what, I'm in therapy. You know, like for me, I have self-care Fridays, you know, where I'm decompressing and I ain't talking to nobody and I'm at the beach and I'm just chilling. I'm getting a massage. I'm getting a mani and pedi. I'm just pouring into myself. You need to figure out what that person does to relieve their own stress. Are they working now? Are they eating clean? Um, what are they doing? You know, are they taking drives just to clear their head? What do they do when life is lifing? Because, you know, life has been lifing a lot, right? And I think this is a beautiful question because then when they tell you what they do, the follow-up question to this, because I feel like all of these got a little, a little B, a part B to it. <laughs> the follow-up question is, okay, cool. When those things happen, like, how do you want me to support you? You know, when there's a death in your family or a close, you know, person that you know, how can I support you? What does that look like? Do you want me to, you know, be there for you? Do you want me to give you a little bit of space? How will you know that I'm still rocking with you when you're going through a difficult time in life? So that's a question that I would definitely, definitely want to know is how do you manage stress and life difficulties when it comes your way? And number five, the fifth question that you should ask a man that you are dating if you want commitment is what is his stance in regards to family, 
and children. Now, this is a broad topic. Family and children can be inclusive of a whole bunch of things. Families, blended families, stepchildren, in-law, all of these things. But for this one, I think I want to focus on what is their idea of what they see for themselves in regards to family and children, right? Do they want to get married? Do they want to have children of their own? If they already have children, how is that going to be intertwined with being a step-parent or having a blended family? What does that look like? There are some people who are dating who don't want kids at all. They're like, no, ma'am. Uh, no, sir. I don't want kids. I want to live the rich and lavish life. I want to travel. I don't want to have that additional responsibility. Just making sure that you are on the same page with this person is crucial. If one person want a kid and the other person doesn't, <laughs> woo, I don't know what the compromise. There is no compromise. It's like, oh, I want five kids and you want zero. Like, what do we have? 2.5? Like, it just doesn't work because then somebody's going to be unhappy, right? This person's going to be like, I didn't get the five that I wanted. And this person said, I wanted zero. Now I got two and a half. <laughs> I'm being funny about the half. The half is more like pregnancy. You know, you got a little, little baby bump. But the other person is going to be unhappy, right? Because that isn't the life that they foresee for each other. So this is about getting in alignment, getting on track, and it's saying that it's okay if we're not on the same page. There are people that I have met, there are men that I have met who are great men, right? But we were just not on the same page when it came to long-term goals, when it came to our life journey and what we wanted out of life long-term, right? They were great. They were a great catch. They had other qualities that I wanted, but it just wasn't a good fit. So we had to part ways. Look, I'm not trying to keep you from your wife and I don't need for you to try to keep me from my husband either. I firmly believe that getting on the same page when it comes to family and children is, is a thing. Now, there are some people who start off with a certain idea of what they want their life to be. And then when they get in relationship and they evolve and change, that changes, right? And I think that that's a very hard place to be in too, because if you said you never wanted kids, your partner said, okay, that's cool because I don't want kids either. And then three years into the relationship, you're like, dang, I want a baby. Woo! That's, that's going to be a big conversation that needs to be had. It's like, okay, either we're going to have this kid or we're going to have to break up. Okay, so that's a great question. And especially if you already have children, having the conversation about, do you want more? Do you want to just keep what you got? Like, how does that work is important. The next one, number six, which is the sixth question that you should ask a man while dating if you want commitment, is what is his thoughts in regards to shared responsibilities and domestic life or activities? Now, this is also very, very important, especially if you are looking towards either moving in with that person or getting married, you need to know these gender roles <laughs> and how your partner to be potentially is gonna want things played out. Are they expecting you to cook five times a week, three meals a day when you work full time and you got other responsibilities? Are they expecting you to cook, clean, have sex, do all of the things? And you're like, baby, that's not what I envision for my life. Are you expecting the man to be the breadwinner and pay for all of his bills, your bills, the collective bills, and you just kick back and eat ice cream all day on the couch? Like, what does this look like? You know, and also, what is realistic? Because people, we have this thing in our mind, like, oh, okay, cool, I want my wife to, you know, cook six days out of seven days, three meals a day. I want her to cook, clean, have sex with me, take care of the kids, do homework, run her own business. Like you just have all of these responsibilities put on her and she's exhausted while wow. you're like, okay, cool. Well, I'm just going to be the breadwinner and I'm just going to take care of the coin. Listen, that may or may not work for certain people. So you need to be on the same page with that and be realistic about that. Like if our, does our lifestyles even match that? Are you even making enough for this woman to stay home and take care of the kids all day and cook and clean for you and have sex with you all day? Because if you're not making enough, I can't do that. You know what I mean? So that's why I say we have to be realistic about these things. And sometimes there's women who are bosses and who want to work and who's been grinding and doing all of those things, but she just wants to be a stay at home mom. And that's fine too, right? Like whatever your heart's desire is, 
that's okay, but just make sure you know it and also that you're conveying and communicating that to the other person so they won't get blindsided when they get into this relationship with you or this marriage with you and you ain't doing none of the things that they thought you were going to do. And last but not least, number seven, and I actually got a bonus for y'all too. I'm always forgetting about the bonus. I'm gonna throw in a number eight for y'all as well. But for this one, number seven, the seventh question that you should have for a man that you're dating if you want commitment is how do you balance work and life? I think that this is a beautiful question and I always, you know, picture people talking about work-life balance and balance. Y'all know I'm all about harmony. Like that's my word. I got a whole book called Hard Work or Harmony, right? And so while I'm not the biggest fan of balance, I do understand that work has its place life has its place. I always say work hard, play hard, right? I I firmly believe that if you're putting in work and you are getting the results and you're doing a lot of that, you need to equally, if not more, have some time for you to live your life. You know what I mean? Like travel, go places, go to the movies, go to a concert, do something that it gives you joy. You know what I mean? You don't have to just do work home, work home, homework, like that is not a life, right? You want to have a balance where you're enjoying family and friends and your hobbies and creating those goals. Even if they're not about career goals, there's other maybe personal goals or life goals that you want to accomplish. Volunteer somewhere, do something unique that is really going to fill your cup. And so you're not just going to look up when you get to be 90 plus years old on your deathbed and saying, dang, I really wish that I would have had more fun. I really wish that I wouldn't have worked so hard. You don't want that type of regret at all. And before I move on to the bonus, I think that this is super important because if you are with somebody or dating somebody and they don't have that balance or even working towards getting better at having that good work-life balance, it's gonna be hard for them to incorporate you into their schedule, right? Like there are genuinely some people who are straight busy, <laughs> like killing it. They got a lot going on on their plate, whether that's a regular nine to five or they're more entrepreneurial, whatever the case may be. There are some people who are busy, busy, busy for real. But if they're desiring marriage, they're desiring commitment long-term, they don't have to create space and availability for that to happen in their life. And so if they're saying they want something, but their life is the opposite, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to attract that. So it's important to know that you need to understand what that person's work-life balance is and if you fit into that equation and if they're making time for you to fit into that equation. And number eight, the bonus before we end today's episode is what is your relationship like with your parents or the people who raised you? Now, I know this can be a little tricky because not everybody was raised by their biological parents. There's adoption. There's all different type blended family, step parents, people who were raised by their grandmother and their auntie and a family friend. Or, there was just so many different family dynamics that I don't have the time to get into. But I think it's important to know what that relationship looks like with their primary caregiver, right? The person who typically raised them, especially from anywhere between zero and like up until 10, like those will technically five. Those are our more formative years, right? Where our brain is developing, we're getting, are supposed to get all the things, the good, the love, the support, you know, the communication skills, all of those things, we're supposed to get those very early on. And if you had a traumatic childhood or abusive or disruptions in your childhood or an absentee caregiver or parent, those can cause issues. But while some people can grow up and reconcile those issues, with that primary caregiver, there's also a lot of people who don't. And this is where we start to get mommy issues, daddy issues, drama, trauma, all of those things. And that can sometimes billow over into a relationship. And so I'm not saying not having a relationship with your parents or your primary caregivers is a negative thing because it can be the healthiest thing not to have relationships with certain parents, depending on what the dynamic is. But I also think that you should be aware of what that dynamic looks like for them and how they're navigating it. At least, at the very least, let it be a conversation. Well, thank you so much for watching another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. Make sure to like, comment, share this because you know there's somebody that you know that needs it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.